everybody, Joel Moose Droppings by ImportSauce.com and today is the day we flip the ratchet switch and we start building things back up. Year in the making, we're going to take you through step by step building this engine up, every bolt, every torque spec, all the way up. Hoping to have this done in about a week, we are starting with rotating assembly today. Okay, everybody, it's been a year in the making. You have followed the series. We are now at the exciting time, almost a year later, where we are building everything back up. So we are here with Ryan, Clampdown Competition in Long Beach. They build engines and they do crazy stuff with cars, as you can see. This is just a little preview, but we have uh, our bedpan. We have our gloves, of course, safety first. We have the block. You saw the paint job in the block head video. One fewer in the series there. And we have all of our stuff over here. You've already seen this in all the other videos, but we have the K1 I-beams forged Wisco pistons times five. All of our Vita Volvo diagnostic specs and instructions torques all of our juices we have our arp for the main we're gonna do the heads as well with those some more assembly juices oil pump we have a crank wrapped up in here all our new king bearings so um we're gonna take you through and we're gonna start putting this dang thing together okay so the first thing we are doing is cleaning the bearings and cleaning the journals where they are going to sit we don't need debris, we don't need burrs, we don't need any of that garbage in there. Uh, so what we're doing is cleaning those one by one, seating them in there, making sure they're nice and snug. And then we are going to uh, put the bedpan on and use the new ARP hardware. We're gonna torque everything down to spec. And then we are going to measure our clearances and compare them here to the Vita printout and the tolerances that Volvo has provided for us and make sure that everything is within spec. So we'll bring you back here in a few once we have that completed. One important thing that we want to do is run some clean out taps down here. Clean out taps different than just a standard cutting tap that you would get. Uh, and here we're just going to kind of chase the threads down. We just want to make sure that we're feeling for anything. Everything's nice and good to go before we actually initiate putting the new hardware in. Make sure everything's clean. Everything is ready for that hardware. And, uh, you know, by doing it by hand, we can feel, really uh, have our foot to the pavement, so to speak, and make sure that if we feel something, we can uh, do some further inspection. Not recommended to use power tools. You may want to, hey, you know, let's speed this thing up. You're gonna lose the feel and uh, you're gonna risk doing some damage. So uh, take your time. Okay, so I wanna take a quick minute and talk about bearings. So if you've looked at the bearing sheet from Volvo, you know that it's color coordinated and each of, well, the connecting rods are all the same part number. It just depends on yellow, red, or blue block. Um, the mains are all different and that is based on the specific code that is on your block. So if you pull your transmission off, and you look, where are we looking? Right there. We see our code, one CCC BBB. Each one of those letters is related to one of the journals. And based on the letter, you match it up to the color code from Volvo, and that will tell you one of the 60 part number bearings that you are going to use. All of which the tolerances are very, very close. So talking to the dealer, and here is a message from the dealer after calling, having them ask everybody in the service department, old timers, new guys that were trained, looking up on the computer, as well as just anybody that they could find. Nobody knew anything about these bearings. Hi, Joel, this is at Cars. I uh, just calling you, I didn't forget about you. Uh, I've been trying and trying to find somebody that can decipher this main bearing chart, and nobody I could have talked to knows how to do it. So 
Um, the directions on it are kind of screwy and just makes no sense. So uh, sorry, I couldn't help you more. If I find somebody, I'll get back to you. But other than that, that's it. Sorry. Thank you. Bye. So uh, what we did is we uh, talked to some guys over the pond who are doing a lot of the uh, RS500 builds and a lot of the Volvo rebuilds on the T5 engines. And they got us in touch with the particular products um, and bearings that are made by King, engine bearing specialists. And essentially they said that these are the bearings that they use for every single T5 build. And these bearings are made to be within spec for any of the Volvos. So there's a, just the, the perfect sweet spot that this bearing will work all the way across. Um, so I know we were going to talk about a big, here's how you select your Volvo bearings and here's how you look at it and decipher your engine code. But instead of doing that, uh, we are putting the King engine bearing part numbers in there and that is what you're going to want to use because it will work for any application of the block and crank number and they're about a third of the price and they are race spec so uh that is our little tidbit about bearings okay here we are we are putting the arp hardware in we are using the supplied assembly lubricant and uh we are going through the instructions uh better than volvo arp actually gives us a chart and they tell us exactly of which size goes where with a quick and easy torque spec. So first thing we're doing is before we put the bedpan on, we're just gonna put the hardware in um, by hand as they instructed, and then we will uh, move on to the uh, tightening and torque after that. One important note is, and ARP says it on their instructions, we want to put these in hand tight. And uh, they made these uh, very high performance bolts very specifically and the instructions will go with that. You don't want to get lazy and you don't want to just put, you know, a drill bit on there and just zoop them in or anything because you uh, could risk the integrity, the structural integrity of the threads that are inside. Keep in mind, these blocks are aluminum. Um, you don't want to do that and start stretching or tapering or doing anything funky with those threads. So as the instructions said, we are doing hand tight only. Okay, so now we have uh, done the mating of the bedpan. We're doing a little tap because there are guide pins. There's about six of them that go across and we can see our hardware is exposed and so we're just going to get this all down and then move on to the next step of the hardware instructions which is going to be applying some nuts and some washers and torquing down here is an important note we just found out there are a few short three of them to be specific uh m8s and these shorter ones are supposed to be in position 15, 18, 22, which would be here, 15, 18, 22. And those are shorter because if we look here, we can see that, oh, that's sunken down. Oh, those two are sunken down. But the instructions are actually wrong. It is not gonna be 15, 18, 22. They have it on the wrong side. So it's actually gonna be the positions up on top. So line everything up and you're gonna look for these shorter. You can see side by side that there is, uh, I don't know, maybe about half an inch difference. So you wanna make sure that you are looking for those, not 15, 18, and 22. Flip them over on the other side. Okay, now we are just taking our wrench. We want to, still by hand, still hand tight, but we're gonna make sure that all of the hardware is, you know, about the same level. Everything is properly seated, but again, hand tight. We're not using any power tools. We're still feeling everything, uh, staying engaged hand to the engine. Next step is now that everything is looking good there, uh, ARP, we are going to use the supplied ARP juice, as they call it, the ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant. And they say, do not use motor oil. It is due to higher friction on the studs, as well as inconsistent clamping force. Use the stuff that they gave you. They gave it to you. You paid for it. Use it. Um, and what you want to do is make sure that you are getting that inside the threads, as well as a little bit 
on the uh, outer flange on there too. So um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and drop some in. And again, they say start with hand tight. So we're gonna go ahead and suit all of these up over onto the bottom of the bed plate. So all of the hardware is installed hand tight with the assembly lube as described. One important note, we are gonna be talking about torque specs for ARP hardware. It is different than the torque specs of the factory Volvo bolts. So if you are using your factory Volvo bolts and you are not using ARP, then do not pay attention to the torque specs that we're talking about here. Make sure that you have your printout from Avita, which is going to walk you through by way of Newton meters and the torque spec and the tightening sequence. Uh, we did check the tightening sequence for both ARP and Volvo, and they are exactly the same. So this chart that uh, ARP gave us, minus the 15, 18, 22 bolts actually being on the other side, um, is spot on in terms of one, two, you know, the bolts in the order to tighten these. But again, pay attention, the torque specs are different. We are gonna go ahead and move forward and torque everything down uh, based on what we have here, which is going to be an initial pass down the middle and then a pass down the side, a pass down the outside, and then back to do a final pass on the, uh, as they call it, the intermediate section there. And then from there, we will be able to start measuring down there. Next thing we are doing is we need to measure the crank and then we need to measure where the crank's going inside the uh, in internal diameter of the bearings that we have put in. And we have, again, the Vita printout, which has our specific uh, measurements for the crankshaft and then also the uh, block there. And then we also have our printout from King Bearing, which uh, talks about our connecting rod bearings and our main bearings that we have purchased and has the specs on there as well. So we're just going through and we are writing down and documenting, keeping track of all of the specific measurements as we go down the crank. So off of the crank using the micrometer, micrometer mic, we have found our exact measurement. And then from there, we transfer that to our dial bore gauge and we are going down all of these to make sure, finding the difference, finding what the spec is and make sure it is within the Volvo factory tolerances. We wanna to make sure that everything is going to be spot on. So we're going down. Uh, we wrote down all of the measurements from the crank and we're just uh, keeping an eye here, making sure everything looks good uh, rather than just willy-nilly bolting everything up and hoping for the best. This T5 engine rebuild is brought to you in part by IPDUSA.com. IPD is import sauces go to for anything we need maintenance or repair on any of our Volvos. One reason we like them, the My Garage feature, where you can add all your Volvos and then quickly shop for particular parts for that vehicle. When you click on anything, it will give you an alert letting you know that this does fit. If there are fitment issues, you will get an alert when adding to cart, and this will let you know what exactly to check out before. This will ensure that you are getting exactly the right part for your Volvo. Second thing we love, kit builders. Here, for popular items, you can get the option to build a kit by adding on additional components that may be related. In many cases, you'll have options for genuine Volvo, or for a more budget-friendly shopping cart, you can add aftermarket. So, when you're going through, you can either select or not select certain components and make sure that you're getting exactly what you need. Lastly, customer service. Their customer service is great. They are U.S. based here on the West Coast. Uh, anytime we call the phone number, a real live Volvo owner and daily driver answers the phone and works with you on any product questions or help with your shopping cart. If you're getting your parts anywhere else, go ahead and check out IPDUSA.com. Okay, so we just finished measuring out the block and everything in there with the bearings installed, everything torqued, everything met up to spec as intended. We're now moving on to 
measuring the pistons, which we actually already did and a very similar uh, process there where you are going to, you know, check the, uh, against the spec sheet that Volvo provides us there, all of your Vita. And uh, the good thing about these, not the uh, factory ones, but the um, Wysco pistons also came with some different uh, printouts and sheets for the specs as well. So we went ahead and checked the uh, inner diameters here. And then we also uh, confirmed with uh, the bearings that we got on there as well. The bearings for these noted is a lot easier than the bearings for the block because there are no variations from Volvo or any other manufacturer um, on those bearings. So uh, you have standard uh, under and over, but as long as your crank was uh, still at spec and nothing was done to your block, then you just get the standard set of uh, what we have here is the King uh, connecting rods, but you can also get Volvo very, very easy. Refer back to the parts list that we have with the part numbers and the clickable links that will take those to your shopping cart. So uh, yeah, all five of those were checked and now we are moving on and um, going to be showing you the uh, piston rings and the gaps and, and the stuff that we're doing there. Okay, so we are checking gap on the rings. Use that little tool and that is gonna make sure that the ring is uh, evenly distanced from the top. If it is, uh, you know, crooked either way or the other, the gap in between there is not going to read properly. So from there, we get a little gauge and we sink in and we see exactly what the spec is going to be. And with these uh, Weisco Weiscos, we've been very lucky that all of these are pretty much uh, meeting uh, the spec that is laid out both on their chart and the Volvo factory chart. So what we're doing is we're going uh, cylinder by cylinder and we are doing ring by ring on there just to make sure that we stay consistent and that we don't lose track of anything. Uh, the first five have been pretty good because they've all uh, out of the box been perfect to spec. So we'll continue on uh, checking all the rest of these on there and bring you back. In this situation, we found that the ring gap was uh, a little less than what we needed. So we're using this fancy tool here opening it up and just making sure that it matches up with what Vita and Wisco has told us they wanted to see. After just doing a smidge of grinding, we just go ahead and stick that right back in, make sure that it's seated at a proper depth so that when we measure, we get accurate results. And then we check it. And if we need to, we grind a little more. If it's perfect, then we move on. Okay, so those rings are filed. Everything is up to spec. Didn't take that long, but we did check each and every one, grinded it properly, everything specs out, and now we are going to move on and take a look at these pistons and then the others. With everything looking good and up to spec, we are pulling the hardware, the bedpan back off so that we can now drop the crank in. Okay, so the bedpan seating plate is off and we have now some assembly lube. Uh, wanna make sure to use plenty of that because we wanna make sure everything goes on and is moving and grooving. Okay, and just for good measure, we wanted to do a quick wash down. Uh, the crank has been sitting and just to make sure there was nothing on there, but also just make sure that anything was left behind from the machining, that everything is clear. All of uh, anything where oil travels through, we wanna make sure that the, A, there's no gunk in there, B, that it has a nice flow to keep that oil moving. The crank is all cleaned and air dried and polished up. And now we're gonna apply assembly loop on here as well. Everything that is gonna to touch anything is going to get assembly lube. Okay, so we went ahead and dropped that in. The next thing we're gonna do is because we removed the hardware from here, if any of them kind of, we can see we got some loose stuff there, we're just gonna go back through, snug everything up. Uh, again, as we would call it, hand tight. We're not gonna take any power to it, but just to make sure those are snug and ready to receive the hardware after the bedpan gets seated. Before we get too far, we do not want to forget, because it has to go on before, is our crankshaft rear seal. There's our part number 246, 685, but that is on the master parts sheet I did, but there's that big guy, and that guy is going to go in there. Brand new, uh, you know, nothing, nothing used is going back on this engine. So 
Um, as we're building it back up, we will point out all of the seals, gaskets. Uh, we are also going to move on to putting our Volvo anaerobic seal on here as well, because this is going to be the final clamp down. Okay, so this guy is dropped on. The rear main seal, or the crankshaft seal, as Volvo calls it, is on. Next thing is to apply our anaerobic sealer. So uh, if you look at the Volvo factory spec, if you've done your head uh, before, um, head gasket, you know that there's a special roller that they use, um, and essentially you kind of squeeze it on, and like a paint roller, foam roller, you kind of spread it out evenly. Um, we saw in one of Simply Volvo's videos that he likes to apply it prior to putting these in, but we had to put these in to check tolerances. So these were already in, we're not gonna pull them out. And I found when doing the head gasket that that uh, rolling procedure was eh. So what I do is I just do the bead all the way around and around uh, anywhere on the inside of these bolts as well, get a solid seal um, and then kind of rub it in and just make sure that it's good. I'd rather apply a little bit extra and then when we torque everything down, if we have to wipe some away, then that's fine. Um, so for me personally, and if you watch the videos um, from BD Performance who are doing the MK2 build, same thing. They're just using a caulking gun. They're not using the Volvo paint roller method. So, uh, you know, we don't need a ton of comments about how we went off chart here, um, but that's just what works for us. Okay, so let's not jump ahead. Uh, I will let you know that the anaerobic sealer is all on there. Nice thick bead. And we put the bedpan on. It is going to squash all this down and make a beautiful seal without the Volvo paintbrush. Now we are over here uh, working on these pistons, right? So we got the um, pistons uh, assembled onto the connecting rods. That's easily enough. You just slide the uh, pin in, we'll show you the next one, and then uh, put the retaining ring on there. And now at this point, we are putting our uh, rings onto the piston. Uh, you saw earlier, we had already gapped those out. And then for the initial clocking, uh, they let us know exactly where they want it to be um, so that our gaps are you know, evenly spaced per what they uh, recommend on these. So we'll finish this one up and then we'll bring you back for the next assembly so you can see that. Just to be safe on the bedpan, we can see that there is uh, oil uh, tracks in there. So we're also gonna apply, or we did apply, the uh, anaerobic sealer to the bedpan. That way when it meets over there with the block, we know that everything is completely sealed on there. Okay, we have flipped that over. It is on. The next thing we're gonna do is kinda give a little tappy tappy with a hammer. We know that there are some uh, rubber hammer. We know that there are some guide pins in there and we wanna make sure that seats as much as possible. We don't wanna use the hardware to uh, try to seat on that. We wanna make sure that it's done as naturally as possible. Now that everything is seated, we are gonna go back through and do our final uh, torque on all of this again. This T5 engine rebuild is brought to you in part by ElevateCars.com. If you own a Volvo, you've probably heard the name Elevate, but if you've never been to the website, you should definitely check it out. ElevateCars.com has plenty of performance and styling parts for your Volvo. Simply visit the website, find your particular model, and from there you can dial into subcategories. One particular part that we're really excited to add from their catalog on this rebuild is the open deck sleeves. But even if you're just getting started, you can definitely find something within your budget to get your Volvo stepped up to the next level. Go ahead and check them out, ElevateCars.com. Okay, so on the piston assembly, we took the, uh, the sleeve guy, slid it in, and that holds it and connects it to the connecting rod, as we see there. Um, we definitely lube that up because, again, anything that's moving before we uh, fire up, we want to make sure that it has some assembly lube. And then there are keeper rings on each side, and we just go ahead and kind of um, pop those in, and then they'll fit into the groove and lock that so that it doesn't fly off. And then the last thing is the rings that you saw earlier that we did all of our uh, gap check and filing on the ones that needed it are going on. And those pretty much just slide on. Uh, some people use the uh, piston ring installer tool, but these are uh, 
pretty uh, mellow. And a lot of times they'll recommend that so that you don't get too crazy and bend your rings out of, out of whack. But we're being careful, we're being diligent, and there's a shot of the tool. Um, and then once we put this in, again, you did see the gap or the, uh, the clocking, and we're just gonna go ahead and spin those um, and do that. Uh, bringing you back over here, the final torque has been completed. Uh, going back through, again, the ARP torque sequence is the same, but the torque spec is not. So if you're still using Volvo factory bolts, you're gonna want to uh, follow Vita and use that information. If you're using ARP, then use their sheet. So the next thing we're gonna do is we'll bring you back when we are putting the piston connecting rod uh, assembly in here. Okay, uh, we have torqued everything. And if you have multiple people, you might as well have multiple people check the torque, right? Uh, if I missed one, then somebody else is gonna catch that. We're now going through with a paint pen and we are just confirming that, hey, these have been done. If we get down a rabbit hole on something else later, we can look back and just know, hey, this has been handled. We don't need to revisit it. Okay, so uh, as we saw, the piston rings were on. We have pulled the other ones out that were sitting there. We are leaving all of those and we're just pulling out one by one what we need. And we put some oil on there just so that we can get it slid in. And now we are seating the bearings uh, with some assembly lube, a uh, generous amount. And with that, we're also going to apply it to the surfaces where those uh, connecting rods are going to connect to the crank. Uh, so uh, again, we'll pull out these bearings one by one and pretty much just follow that procedure. We will do the same application here on the top with the bearings there. Um, and then we will show you how we put these in. Next thing we're doing is we uh, put a little oil down there in the cylinder. We put a little oil on our uh, piston installation tool. This is the uh, Weissco, Weissco as well. Uh, 83 millimeters, so it matches the piston exactly that we are working with. Um, there are some adjustable ones, and they make them in all sizes. But you know, for this application, we just got the one that fits what we're working on. So as you see there, we go ahead and get the piston in there, and now it's set at that 83 millimeters. And now we line that up, and we should be able to just kind of gently get that guy moving down. We may have to turn the crank because the crank may be um sitting up too far maybe hitting that so yes. that's something that if you're butting up into anything you can do a little spinny spin and it should uh release it do a little tap you can see it's moving down moving down and there we go so we can see that it's in there push it down we're feeling on the bottom and making sure that that half circle of the connecting rod is seating into the crank Okay, so what we've opted to do is just have this guy sideways instead of dropping the uh, piston in and flipping it over and then doing it and then flipping it back over. We have it like this. We can get these pistons in over here and then we can just simply walk around and uh, do the uh, bottom bearing of the connecting rod and hardware there. Okay, so we are using some of that ARP lube because the Weissco or the uh, K1 connecting rods actually came with ARP hardware, as they should when you're spending that much money. Uh, we've put some of that ARP lube on and uh, we are, uh, the bearing has been seated in the bottom half and we are just going to torque that down to spec. Let me show you about that. There are two methods um, that they give us on there. So initially, uh, you are going to um, either use one of two methods. It's either going to be the stretch method, if you have a um, tool for that. And if not, it says if the stretch method is not possible, for example, you don't have access or you can't see uh, or get to the other end of the bolt, then the torque and angle is acceptable as well. Again, uh, we're not going to talk too much about this. We're just going to go through the procedure because if you're using Volvo factory, they're going to have different specs on there and you need to make sure that you follow uh, the Vita um, procedure and use those specs. So we're going to go through all five. Um, you already saw us uh, drop that piston in. Uh, we've just talked about uh, getting that thing linked up through the connecting rods to the crank. 
So we will bring you back when all five of these are uh, put in. So just a quick note, we talked about it earlier with what uh, uh, is referred to as the clocking or the uh, piston uh, ring alignment, right? So each one of these has a gap on it and uh, mainly they want to make sure that these are uh, spread apart. You don't want all of your gaps running down a single line and that is just for compression, um, proper sealing, things of that nature. So you want to make sure that with whatever pistons you're using, if you're using Volvo or if you're using aftermarket, that you check and clock according to what they say initially when you slip that in. Okay, so earlier we were talking about marking and putting your torque lines so you know what you've done. This is especially, especially important when you're doing torque to yield or stretch bolts, right? Because once you stretch it, and for example, these connecting rods needed 55 degrees. And if you stretch it and you don't mark it and you forget and you come back, you can't check that, right? With a torque wrench, you can put it on and if it clicks, hey, it's torqued to where it needs to be. But with this, again, if you don't mark it, you're not gonna know. You could do 55 and you could come back and accidentally do another 55 or your buddy who's working in it says, hey, I'm gonna come back and torque. So uh, very important on those, uh, especially uh, to mark the torque. One important note, uh, we had already checked this earlier before we mounted all the uh, pistons and connecting rods and all that, but uh, we forgot to mention it and we just realized that now um, with this dial indicator, we need to check also the uh, the movement of the crank or the, uh, the, you know, the amount of thrust. And per Volvo's sheet, it was um, in millimeters, 0 0.08 to 0.19 and if you convert that so what we did is we just got a little pry guy in here and we just moved it and this guy moved and it was perfectly in spec so you want to make sure that you also check that because once everything's in um and all your measurements are are, are dialed and into spec you don't want uh the crank being sloppy back and forth or in in the way that these are mounted side to side so um again with that proper mounting the thrust bearing or the flange bearing as they call it is all set and ready checked and done okay so everything is done this is what the bottom before the oil pan looks like we can see that we're spinning it with our 30 millimeter we just stuck the uh crank pulling nut on there and we're just giving it a spin but everything is moving freely there's no grinding, there's no squealing, there's nothing like that. Um, and, and those are the things you wanna look out for. If you feel some kind of binding and you see something weird in there, um, then that's it. We'll go ahead and flip it over to the top and you can see what's going on up there as well. Okay, and on the top now, giving it a spin. Everything is just moving. Little to no force on there. So that wraps up the rotating assembly. There are some accessories that bolt onto here, but essentially that is the core of that, the bottom end there. And uh, we'll pick up on the rest.